Hello everyone, this is Riley. This is an animation of the fundamental tutorial. Today's topic is about visualizing the fourth. In animation of the very likely you will use fourth to trigger specific action when satisfying a specific condition. And there are pretty many settings for the fourth. These settings may not be hard to understand by reading the menu, but still, uh, during actual working, if you don't see the fourth, it may be hard to understand how things actually go. So, today's topic is about how to visualize the fourth and the many settings to change the fourth, and so on. So, let's go. So, here is a very simple setup that I've done in animation node. Basically, I'm distributing objects on a spiral using the distributed matrices node. And here, I'm firstly going to take a offset matrices. And while I'm connecting that, nothing occurs. But if I'm activate the locations and uh, move the Z up, you can see all the objects goes up from the horizontal. And by changing these four values, I can define how much they actually move according to this translation. So when the fourth is zero, then they do not move. And here we can use, uh, I'm having this controller, and I'm let's set a object controller for. And let's select our controller, put the fourth into the fourth. You can see only if the object matrices is originates in the region of my fourth, and then they will start to move up. If they are outside the fourth, then they will not move up. And this is how it works. And here you can see there, because there is some object which is on the edge of my fourth, so they only move up a little bit. So there is a kind of a transition, you can see. And here you can see the fourth offset and the fourth width. If we increase the fourth offset, then you can see it expands. If we increase the fourth width, it seems like it becomes a softer transition and so on. So from this example, you can actually see that we can visualize the fourth indirectly through its effect. However, here is one issue um, because in reality, what I usually do is I'm going to animate this controller. So I'm going to move this controller away and I may move this controller back by keyframe and so on. And when the, my controller is very far away from the entire scene, and if I'm, I, I, if I'm changing the values, then I don't know how my fourth actually look like at all until it actually hits the stuff. And then I know, oh, my fourth is a little bit touching the settings, but I still don't know how my fourth look like. And I don't actually know how the offset and the fourth width will look like and they're changing the entire things. So we need to have a way to visualize that correctly. Otherwise, I never know how to stop my numbers. So just a reminder that if you take a 3D viewer to the fourth, there's nothing that will show. And if you select this node and it goes to viewer, it also will only just tell you, interpolate fourth, point distance fourth, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a, basically, it tells nothing. <laughs> so how can I actually see the fourth when I need to see it? This is, tends to be a very tricky question. So I'm going to teach you a preset that has been used to indirectly visualize the fourth. And uh, to generate the uh, presets, be aware that you have to save that in your startup files. So basically, I have a very huge preset library to do various functions, and it's still expanding. So this is kind of idea. And uh, I'm firstly going to show you this preset. So it's called the vertex color transition loop. So this preset actually has been discussed in my shader motion graphic tutorial. It's the example three. Uh, so maybe you already know the kind of idea. So I'm going to subdivide this plane like uh, 20 times. Usually the more the better, but uh, if you make too much, it also puts a lot of stress in your computer. So sometimes it might not be desired. So maybe uh, I, currently I would say 20 cuts may be good enough. I don't know. We will see. And I'm going to select this plane. And then we need a vertex color layer. So I just go to the 
panels and uh, add a vertex color, which is fine. And then I'm going to add the material. And in this material, I'm simply going to the vertex color. You can put that into either color or emission, depends on uh, what has been looking like in your scene. In this case, I'm just going to the uh, let's just go to the viewport shading node. I'm going to turn down the strength. So now it does not look like anything. So if I'm turned down the strength, everything becomes dark because there's no light, no wood, no anything. But because I put the, the vertex color into the emission, my entire plane is shining white. Because the fourth is one. But if I'm turned down the fourth, then it becomes black. So the fourth zero to one is the difference between black and white in this case. So here, if I'm putting the fourth to the fourth, then you can immediately see this fourth. And now you can actually understand, oh, how am I actually fourth actually works. So if I'm changing the offsets, then when the white portion is touching my scene, the object goes up and so on. So if you have a lighting, so you can directly just put everything into the, play, into the uh, viewport shading. What? what? You can put it into the render preview instead of um, material preview, but it's a basic kind of idea. So before we talk about some further aspects on different form, let's first let's build this preset. And because I'm only to work with a single object, a single visualizer, I'm going to take a start with a group input. And because I'm going to evaluate all its vertices, I need the object mesh data. It's very important to put the object back to the input and work the space into the input. So in case if you're parenting, if the, your visualizer is parenting some other stuff for whatever reasons. However, the modifier is actually not necessary. Uh, it's because the vertex color actually not want to read into modifier. I don't know if this has been changed or not. Maybe sometimes it will be evolved in the future. It just, I just put that into place, but just to be aware, so many times, as far as I see, it does not actually work, so you have to manually subdivide or you have to apply it, your modifier. Either way, it's not a procedural. So in the vertex uh, locations, I'm going to separate the polygons. The reason to do that, um, so let's hit U. Go to the socket setting and then turn on the edge indices. The reason to do this is because if you go to the UV editor, you can see how everything has been distributed. So now for each polygons, they have four edges, but these two polygons are connected. So ideally speaking, in this kind of setup, I need eight edges, but in this case, it will only have like seven edges, which is actually not right. It's because you are going to use each vertex, you are going to change each vertex color or each polygons. So you need this node to work. So it's kind of just ideas. And then I'm going to evaluate for. I'm going to change the type into list and make it the locations. So I'm going to evaluate its vertices number, its vertices location. And I'm going to put the fourth back to the new input. And then within these strands, I'm going to combine color. And I'm going to change the type into HSL because the lightness will be con will decide whether this object is completely white or black. So the strength goes from zero to one, while the lightness also goes from 0 to 1. So you just uh, link them, it will be fine. And this is a very actually good part because in the previous version of animation node, the lightness it has not been vectorized. So you have to generate a loop for whatever bullshit. But then now you just directly link it, will have no problem, which is very, very cool. Next thing is to set the vertex color. Very simple, straightforward. Uh, we're going to use the same object. And it's important to take the vertex color layer 
And this setting is not essentially important for the fourth visualizer, at least not in my opinion. Or maybe sometimes it's useful. But another thing is this setup is not only useful for the fourth visualizer, but it can also be used in other purposes at some point. So it's important to kind of do this. So up to this moment, basically it's finished. So let's just uh, hit the output button and output the object. And uh, so now we have this preset. So there are other settings I've made, but uh, at some point, I don't think these are necessary. I think I'm just going to cancel them out in the future. But this is really all about it. If you would like to add more function, you just add the map range in the strength. Actually, it's, again, it's not necessary because you can try to interpolate the fall. Um, another thing is like uh, if you would like to load the UV, I, I don't know why you need to load the UV, but you just hit use and it goes to load the UVs. But I think I'm just going to clean up these two sockets. And uh, this kind of idea, you can also rearrange this thing stuff. So let's take a look whether our setup will actually work. And uh, yeah, you can see it's working pretty fine. And this is basically how it works. I think this is it. Uh, there are several things I have to remind you with this setup. One thing is this setup only works for certain faults, like the fault that is relative to the actual location of whatever stuff, like the vertices, object locations, and so on. There are some other types of faults, for example, index max fault. If you plug that to the fault, you can see the every second of vertices will change its color to the black. You can also change the step size every five vertices and so on. In this case, the every five vertices is different from the every five objects in the same. So in such kind of fourth, which evaluates the list number instead of the actual location, this method does not help to visualize the fourth. But on the other side, why do I actually need to visualize the fourth? Because I think it's too easy to understand every five steps. There's no, also no other settings. So you can do whatever by yourself. Other example is like delay time, a uh, delay fourth, which basically do similar kind of things, whatever things. So basically it's not recommend to visualize in such kind of cases. Another example is a fade of fourth. I don't know if there is more examples, but it just, just to realize not all of who can be properly visualized by this method. And the last thing I would like to mention is I don't recommend you. So for example, by any chances you have a loop. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of purpose you need a loop for whatever functions. And you have a fourth within the loop, like the object controller fourth within the loop for whatever reasons. I do not recommend you put the fourth within the loop. So if you have this kind of setup. Um, now let's put the object into the iterator. I don't know what you are actually doing with this kind of setup, but I do not recommend you put the object, uh, put the fourth into the fourth because uh, you, technically speaking, you only need to run this setup for one time. to visualize a single fourth. But if you put it into a loop, then all these vertices, like uh, maybe about 1,000 vertices, will be re repeated evaluated for multiple times. And it will cause a lot of stress in your machine. Um, actually, in fact, this method by itself is already power consuming. So don't put this into a loop. I really recommend you to either just directly hit these buttons and output a fourth list. And once if you have the fourth list and output that to place. And you can see it does not link and it's just to take a mixed fourth. 
and set it into list, then it will convert that into single valve and do whatever kind of stuff. So now you basically get a kind of idea. If you directly put that into a loop, then it will cause a lot of stress. You can see originally it's, uh, it's 2 milliseconds. It's uh, 4 milliseconds. But then now if you put it into loop, it will immediately go to 100 milliseconds. And in such kind of setup, it's, a, it's already a lot. And if you, the setup is, gets more complicated, it will basically crash your computer. I would say a big no to these kind of things. So please use the other methods, which goes from 4 seconds to 10 seconds, which is tolerable. Another method to do is um, within, this is some advanced feature in the loop. I will discuss in the other separate tutorial. But the one thing you can potentially do, if you want only a simple, single sample fourth, so let's hit this plus icon and take a fourth, a single fourth, remember? And then within this fourth, I'm going to the node and I'm going to output this fourth and use the reassign button. I'm going to probably delete these inputs. Again, I will basically explain all these things in separate tutorial. So you just need to follow at this current moment. So now basically by this setup, by this reassignment, I'm outputting a single fourth and I can use this single fourth to get a sample. It is just kind of an idea and now it's four milliseconds, which is very, very cool. So basically the idea is never put this into directly into a loop, but instead you either output the fourth list or reassign the fourth so that it saves your stress of your machine instead of crashing it. So this is kind of idea and um, I hope it's kind of helpful. I think it's really kind of helpful. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.